if you would like to lay your hands on the working files for this project and some tutorial style explanation dash walkthrough videos, you can get them on my Patreon. So, can I use Blender for 2D animation? The short answer is yes. The long answer is yes, but it's not as simple as it seems. At least it wasn't simple for me when I started, as I never really used Blender for 2D animation before. When I started this video, I knew a bit about the Grease Pencil, but that was about it. As always, I didn't really know what I was doing, so I decided to make a small proof of concept project first. I gave myself four simple goals with this project. Figure out a workflow for 2D animation in Blender. Learn as much as I can along the way. Keep it short. And most importantly, have fun. If you're wondering why I chose Blender and not Toon Boom, it's because I use Toon Boom at work every day. I just wanted to try something new. I also wanted to use Clip Studio Paint for background painting. So I came up with a simple plan of action and split it into stages. Character design. This is the stage where you design, well, characters. Idea for short animation. Writing down the script and locking it in. Storyboard. The main key poses that tell the story. Just by looking at them, you should get a sense of what's happening in the scene. Production stage. Do a breakdown and turn the storyboard into animatic. Rough animation. The first animation pass with rough sketches and basic motion. Cleanup. Cleaning up the lines and adding color. This is also where I do some in-betweens and breakdowns. In bigger production, this part is usually split between different artists. 3D model of the location. It's almost like building a movie set, but in 3D. It helps with layout and background stage. Layout and background painting. Here I draw and paint all the backgrounds based on renders from the 3D set. Simple effects and compositing. At this stage you add things like glows, blurs and do color adjustments. Final edit. This is where you put everything together and turn it into one big video clip. To sum it up, these were the steps I needed to figure out. Not in full detail, but just enough to get the project finished. I started the character design stage at my local coffee shop. I'd grab a coffee, find a quiet corner, open my tiny iPad and start doodling characters, while also thinking about the story ideas. Eventually, I came up with the idea for the short. It wasn't anything special, or particularly funny, but it let me keep things simple. And it had all the elements I was looking for. One location, consistent lighting, a single color palette. Since I rarely draw, it took a while to get back into it. I had to retrain my hand a bit. But after a few sessions, I ended up with some decent character concepts which of course I posted on my Instagram for validation and likes. Once I had the first step done, I worked on rough sketches and storytelling poses. So that's when I realized I couldn't keep characters on model. Every drawing looked a bit different. The proportions were all over the place. It all came down to my poor drawing skills and sure, I could spend a few months doing proper drawing exercises, but honestly, I couldn't be bothered. With those sketches finished, I went back to my cave and organized everything in the editing software to get the timing right. Once that was done, I exported each scene as a separate clip. I ended up with around 15 scenes. At this point, I decided to make a small breakdown of the sequence. I opened a Google spreadsheet created a field for each scene, added some columns, and went through it scene by scene, marking all the necessary elements in each shot. On a bigger production, breakdowns I used to plan out the workload and figure out which department handles what. But with just 15 scenes and a fairly simple sequence, it wasn't too difficult. Some of the things I look for when doing a breakdown are background reusability, health cells, props, effects. Next. I brought the timed animatic into Blender and started working on roughs. I hadn't used Grease Pencil for full animation before, so I had to figure things out as I went. Instead of watching tons of tutorials, I'd just try something, and if I got stuck, I'd look up a solution for that one problem. Anytime a step felt repetitive, or like it could be automated, 
I would search for faster methods. For example, it take me way too long to realize you can use curve tool to draw clean, fast lines. My first shots were all hand-drawn and they were pretty wobbly because I had no idea the curve tool existed, even though it was right there on my screen the whole time. There are plenty of 2D animation plugins out there, but only two really stood out for me. The color picker from L'Effet Special and Needy Pen Fill Bucket. Both plugins felt essential to this workflow. I honestly can't imagine working without them. Blender's default color picking isn't exactly the most user-friendly, and while the standard fill tool works well, it often takes a bit of wrestling to get the results you want. Then again, maybe that's just me. Um, the more I used Blender, the more comfortable it felt. Switching between sculpt mode, edit mode and draw mode started to feel second nature, and honestly, it made the process more fun. With a bit of practice, I was finishing the later shots in about half the time it took me to do the early ones. The main drawback of the progress I made was the inconsistency between shots. By the time I reached the final scene, it was pretty clear how much the animation style had shifted from the first shot. After years of working with rigs, I kind of forgotten that consistency was even a thing. Still, the final result looked good enough, so I rolled with it. Now, this might be obvious to some, especially if you're already using Grease Pencil, but I found there are three main ways to handle shadows and coloring in Blender. The first method is to draw shadow lines directly into the line art, like in anime production, and then fill those areas with color separately. It gives you full control over the shape and color of your shadows, and the result looks clean and polished. The downside, it's slow and managing shadow colors across multiple shots can quickly become a headache. The second method is to block in flat shapes first, then add a shadow layer on top using blending modes. This approach is faster and simpler, but you have less control over the exact shadow color. You might also need to tweak things later during compositing stage. And the third method relies on Grease Pencil modifiers to offset their shapes into shadows and rim light automatically. It's by far the fastest approach, but in my opinion, it also gives the cheapest looking result. So I've ended up using all three methods throughout my scenes. Before you ask, there is no single best method. It all depends on the look you're going for. At this point, I thought the animation was done, but since I didn't animate with layouts in place, which was a big mistake, I had to tweak some scenes afterwards. I made a simple 3D set for the location, took about two hours, then I set up all the scenes in Blender using that 3D location, placed the camera, did high-res viewport renders, and dropped them into Clip Studio Paint. Drawing layouts was actually pretty fast and relaxing. I did all the line work on vector layers, which made it easier to adjust line thickness later. It's also great at adjusting shapes without the need to redraw the line hundreds of times. So I'd never done it before. And to be honest, color seems to be my biggest weakness. I just don't get how color theory works. Theory? Theory? So I had to find a simple way to paint backgrounds without overthinking it. I grabbed the first layout and just started filling the shapes with flat colors. Then I used adjustment layers until it looked okay. The first background became the base for the rest. I think the pros call it the master background. After the background stage, it was time to learn compositing. I had never touched Blender's compositor before. It felt super weird, not because of the node system, as I love nodes, but because I'm used to DaVinci Resolve and had never done proper compositing in a 3D package. Figuring out how to apply effects to the whole sequence took some time. The project took me more than a month. That includes the learning time too. Anyway, here's the final piece.
In the end, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of what to expect when choosing Blender as your tool of choice. It's not the smoothest ride, but definitely you can do something amazing with it. And to be honest, it's kind of fun once you get used to it. With what I know now, I'm confident I could refine the workflow even further and make the entire shirt in Blender without the need for Clip Studio Paint. And if you like the video, you can subscribe, I guess. I may post more videos soon, 